Hi, I'm Rebecca Kemp Brent. I'm a bit of a manipulator. Uh, not that way. I like to take a piece of fat, flat fabric and turn it into something with a lot of texture and depth. And I'd like to show you this bolster pillow today that's a tucked panel in the center. It's a really simple project. We're going to make something flat that then buttons around the bolster. And I think that you'll enjoy making and manipulating the tucks. Before I start on that tucked panel, just let me show you really quickly the edge finish that I've used on the ruffle. You could certainly hem it if you prefer, but what I've done here is to use a decorative stitch on my sewing machine. And for this particular stitch, I've used a twist thread to bring a lot of color into it because this is a fairly plain fabric. Um, I stabilize the fabric with spray starch so it's a really good surface for sewing on and stitch the decorative stitch then just apply a little bit of seam sealant to the back of the stitches and trim that with a pair of scissors so it makes this great finish without actually having the extra bulk of the hem. On the silk that I used for the pillow I've used a nice shiny machine embroidery thread to do that stitching instead. So whatever your choice, a little decorative stitching, it's a good chance to use that part of your machine's functionality. But now let's talk about these tucks. We start with a flat piece of fabric. I'm going to be demoing on a piece that's smaller than what you need to make the pillow, just so that you can see all of what I'm doing. But this will still show you the techniques that you'll need. I'm all for doing things the quick and easy way. So instead of taking a ruler and marking all the way across my fabric, I'm just going to put my fabric on my gridded cutting mat, which has lines an inch apart. And I'm going to use those lines to mark the edges of my fabric every one inch. And you need to mark both of the long edges. These marks for this particular project start two and a half inches from the end and we just make a mark every inch down the length of the fabric and it finishes two and a half inches from the other end. Then we're ready to go to the sewing machine and start the fun part of the project. Pinch each mark. You have to be sure these are two parallel marks, so I'm going to start at one end just to be sure I have the two that are right across from each other. Pinch and hold that, and then just draw your fabric back and forth across the edge of your table. And guess what? That makes a really nice straight crease on your fabric. We're going to continue doing that with each pair of marks down the length of the fabric. Just do two or three of these. It's faster. You don't have to do them all at once, and you don't have the heat from standing there at the iron all that time. Then you want to set your machine up for a quarter inch sewing. And if you have a quarter inch foot, or if there's an adjustment on your machine for quilting, for piecing quarter inch seams, this is a great time to use it. I actually have my machine set up for a straight stitch and the quarter inch quilting foot. When we make this first tuck, Another sneaky thing, we're going to actually sew the hem at the same time. So I want to fold the raw edge of my fabric so that it meets that first crease line, refold the crease, and then when I stitch my tuck a quarter of an inch from the edge, that's actually going to finish the hem on the wrong side as well. Then we just continue with our pinching, creasing, and stitching the next tuck. I'm using a contrasting thread 
so that you can see what I'm doing. But of course, when you're working on this project for yourself, you want to match your sewing thread to your fabric so that this part of the stitching is not visible. Or, as I did on the muslin pillow, you could choose to do this with a contrasting thread and that way your stitching becomes part of the design. I really like it best when the stitching blends in because then you're left with this great texture. And especially if you're working on a silk fabric like the Green Dupiani pillow, because one of the best things about silk is the way light plays across the surface. So you can see now how the technique works, and I will just continue until I get this entire panel tucked, and it's going to look like this. This also gives you an idea of how much smaller it becomes. With the quarter inch tucks that we're sewing spaced an inch apart, we actually lose about half of the fabric width. So if you're planning a panel to put into something, remember that you need to start out about twice as big as you want it to finish. Now comes the really fun part. Don't press your fabric at this point. And we're going to just take a ruler and the marking pen and we're going to draw marks perpendicular to our tucks. It doesn't matter that you won't get a mark on both sides of the tuck. You'll be able to see enough of that line to do the work that's coming. We go back to the sewing machine and we start on our first line that we've drawn. I need to change feet here too. I'm going to take off my quarter inch foot and replace that with my all-purpose foot. Turn the very first tuck toward you. And I'm going to get the needle down into it to help me hold it. Then I want to turn the second tuck away from me. So we're going to turn these two tucks so that they face each other. And I'm going to start with just a little bit of a back stitch to hold this in place. And then I turn the third tuck away from me. Sorry, the third one comes toward me, and the fourth one goes away from me. So I'm sewing these tucks in pairs, one toward and one away, and just alternating as I stitch down this line. Let me sew one more line of these stitches and you can see how we form this honeycomb pattern. When I start with the second line of stitching, I want to turn this first tuck in the opposite direction. So this time, the first tuck goes away from me. The second tuck comes toward me and the third one goes away. So I'm still stitching in pairs but I started out going in the opposite direction. It can help to have a little tool handy to help you hold these right up next to the presser foot. And sometimes you may find that you need to lift the presser foot just a little bit to get everything turned in the right direction. And now you can see how this honeycomb is beginning to form. It's a lot of fun to manipulate tucks. This is just one of the many patterns that you can use for it. Here's an example of similar tucks, but you can see these have been manipulated in a different way. So my first row of stitching, they turn in one direction, and the second row, they turn in the other. And I've also accented this particular panel with a little bit of machine embroidery over the textured surface. So this gives you an idea. There's a lot you can do with fabric manipulation. I hope you'll have a little fun with your tucks and maybe give it a try. Put a little texture in your work.